Hello, welcome to Board Game Base Coats, and today we are unboxing Minara, the Japanese edition. All right, so let's take a quick peek at Amazon here. Uh, now, very clearly shows the international edition, which is what I ordered, but no, it was swapped. So, <laughs> got the one here uh, licensed to ArcLight. Um, now, if you saw my uh, El Dorado uh, video, yeah, I, the same thing happened where I thought I was getting the English language edition, but got the German one instead. I was more upset with that one because I can't read German, <laughs> but I can read Japanese. Eh, it's fine. We'll live with this. All right. So uh, first off, we've got a bunch of these columns. I mean, a huge bag of them. Uh, let's go ahead and check these out. Uh, very nice, smooth paint job. Although some of these were chipped already in the bag, all right? So definitely something there that uh, was kind of a bother. Um, here, a cloth bag. And you guys, you guys notice something? Yeah, just a handful of those in there. Barely get my hand in there. Yeah, the bag is smaller than the plastic one. <laughs> I think this should have been a hint um, to... Oops. Oh, yeah, the uh, columns here are quite slick, by the way. Um, I think the this should have been a hint to the um, makers here um, when the, the bag of the plastic columns is quite a bit larger than the cloth bag they provide. I mean, not a big deal. I've got um, sleeves, I've got little plastic containers for components, and I've got extra drawstring bags, and I'll definitely be making that component upgrade here because um, this is a little silly. <laughs> anyway, let's go ahead and get to the rules. Now, as I say, this is a 100% languageless game, all right? Um, you have these floors, you have the columns, and what decides it? Well, you have these cards so over here on the right side. Um, the cards that tell you basically what you're supposed to be doing, whether you're adding columns or moving some things around. Um, and there's an easy, a middle, and a hard, all right? So that's basically how that goes. So let's go ahead and check out uh, these construction plan cards. All right, so uh, big old name. So uh, square cards, kind of annoying, but you know, they can be sleeved, it's fine. Uh, let's take a closer look. Now these here are the level cards. This basically tells you how many levels you have to complete. We've got the red glyph cards, which are the most uh, difficult. And as you can see, the glyphs are different colors and shapes. Yellow would be in the middle. And finally, the blue glyph cards would be the easier ones. All right, so uh, let's check these out. Uh, you can see, so here, add one column and basically anywhere um, at the top. Uh, left and right there, you can see the circles that are either white or uh, black. And that tells you which, uh, I think it was uh, which side of the tile. I can't remember how that goes. But uh, anyway, um, as you can see, um, it's not a crazy amount. Uh, there are some special things. So uh, move a tile from a, from a lower level to an upper level. And then there are some other crazy things in here. So ooh, up to four tiles. All right, very cool. Or uh, four columns. Yeah, so here, move an entire floor with a column. Uh, I'm not really sure what that one means, but uh, over here, so move two columns, all right, uh, move three columns. Now, the whether it's uh, easy, medium, or, or difficult, there might be some easy ones in the medium. Um, basically, what it is is your chances of getting, you know, a slightly more difficult one uh, are just changed, all right? Uh, let's go ahead and check out the punch boards, of course, my joy. And as I pulled these out, I realized, hey, look at this insert. It's not an insert. It is a box liner. <gasps> Approved! <laughs> it uh, looks kind of nice, all right? Why they went for the stars, I don't know, but very cool. Kind of gives it that mystical feel, I guess. So, uh, checking it out. So, obviously, we've got a light side, we've got a dark side. Let's start punching here. Uh, these little pieces here uh, make up this little construction that you've got to do called the camp. And um, the camp is where columns are stored. Um, a, a certain number of columns are stored when they're pulled out of the bag. Uh, let's go ahead and get to these temple floors. Um, so as for that camp, at the beginning of your turn, you can swap some of the columns that are quote unquote in your hand um, for those. Now, as for these temple floors, I mean, look at these. Um, when you think of like ancient construction, um, temples and you know civic buildings and what have you you think of pyramids or big old square blocks or you know something like that these obviously not sorry um, these have a very sweeping feel 
um, definitely give it a great fantasy vibe. And uh, as you can see, um, some of them have these uh, holes in them, um, which really I think just emphasizes that fantasy feel to them. You know, I've played enough tabletop uh, games, I've played role playing games, uh, adventure games, um, and you think of, you can easily think of each of these tiles uh, having a name, having a function, uh, have being part of this. Uh, bigger narrative, you know, because there are some very cool details uh, on these cards. And you know, this whole light side, dark, dark side too um, would be interesting. Um, the tiles, of course, are not named, but for me, um, oh, and by the way, uh, check out this one. It really, I think, emphasizes this kind of arty feel. Doesn't that look like a palette, <laughs> like a painter's palette? Um, anyway, the, the tiles are not named. But they, they have these cool shapes, um, they have little details on them, um, whether it's statues or altars or whatever, um, specific holes, um, other pieces of detail on them. So I think it's really easy to imagine that, you know, I'm going to go explore this thing. So I really do feel like, all right, I, I'm building uh, this really cool temple in this jungle. So. Um, it really was these tiles that sold me on the game because honestly, I'm really not into balance games. Uh, another reason I went ahead and purchased this one is because that it's a, uh, actually a cooperative uh, balance game. Uh, you think of most balance games and uh, yeah, I want my opponent to, to drop it. I want it to be their fault. <laughs> uh, in this case, uh, you're building it together. Uh, you want to be successful together. So. Um, the combination of the great art on the tiles, these interesting tiles, I mean look at these these uh, really cool punch outs too, um, plus that cooperative play, oh yeah, uh, definitely something uh, to add to the collection. Now I ended up getting the game for about 30, 35 bucks. Now this thing has been on my wish list on Amazon for quite a while, and for the longest time it was like $50, close to $60. Um, so I don't know, maybe, uh, so this recent influx of games, I don't know if I've finally I don't know, gotten lucky as far as the algorithm goes or what's going on or just they're really trying to push games now in Japan. Uh, whatever the case, the fact that the games are becoming more reasonably priced is very cool. So uh, not just for us um, in Japan from abroad, but for the Japanese, so I really hope they'll get into more and more board gaming. All right, so thanks a lot for stopping by. I really do appreciate it. Bye.